two dollar budgie. Um, I want to maybe just shift to some of the causes of wildfires. So first, you know, I definitely want to talk on the climate side, but typically when we when wildfires are kind of getting started up, are they largely just natural causes or is it can some of them really be human induced? Like what's that balance look like from what you've seen over the years? Yeah. Uh, well, any source of heat can cause a fire. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I'll, 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 I'll touch on that uh, later, but uh, in BC, most of our wildfires are caused by lightning. If you were to kind of, okay. you know, percentage wise, you're probably between 70 and 80% of all wow. fires are caused by lightning. And that's very common across, um, across the boreal forest which mm. which ranges right across canada for the remaining 20 to 30 percent we will we'll call those human cause now when we start to unpackage like what is a human cause fire it can be a lot of different things it doesn't mm. necessarily mean a person is out there with a match it could be a power line and a tree falls on a power line and arcs and you get mm -hmm. a fire it could be a vehicle crashes in the ditch and some grass gets on a hot engine block and starts yeah. a fire it could be equipment failure in a forestry operation it could be an abandoned campfire it could be uh an atv or a motorbike with a hot muffler that gets some vegetation on it and that vegetation catches on fire falls off and and leaves a fire behind mm -hmm. it um, it could be arson. It could be a person intentionally lighting a fire mm -hmm. on and on and on. So mm -hmm. there's a, there's a lot of nuance to human caused fire. Um, but it's a much more predictable source of fire in that we typically see human caused fires, uh, concentrated around roadways and population centers, usually within about 20 kilometers. And there's a, 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 a real seasonal component. Uh, we will often see a pulse of human caused fires in the early spring. People are itching to get outside. Mm -hmm. All of our vegetation is still cured. You know, the, the grass is yellow. It's dry. Mm -hmm. uh, the snow is just melted, but nothing's greened up yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you often have very dry air masses, windy conditions in the spring, but people are excited to get out in the warm weather yeah. and, and recreate. And as that human activity uh, starts to ramp up, that's where we'll start to see, you know, a, a little bit of a spike in human caused fires um, in, in early spring. But for the most part, you know, if you look across the fire season, it's a fairly like stable level of like per month, month, okay. month, month, month. It's like there's this background human ignition uh, signal that that's fairly consistent. But for at least for BC, when we get into um, July and August, that's where we really ramp up, where we start to see those big weather systems moving through the province, bringing in that lightning load. For other jurisdictions, you know, I worked in Alberta a lot. Uh, May is a really tricky month in Alberta, mm. um, and they do see a lot of human ignitions um, for the same reasons I just described. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also the month where they they get the most problematic fire weather and, and conditions setting up. Uh, but uh, you'll often see a bit of a in, in other jurisdictions like Alberta, you see a bit of a bimodal where, where you'll get a spike in fire activity in the spring, and then a subsequent spike later in the fall when you um, or late summer fall when you start to get these lightning systems bringing. Uh, additional uh, starts, um, but more in remote areas than, than yeah. human caused fires where they're closer to roads and population centers. So, so there's that. I, I'll say one more thing. Like I said, any heat source can cause a fire. Um, there are instances of like hay bales catching fire and oh. uh, that can just be like the sun shining down on, on, Jeez. on a hay bale and it's yeah. moist inside and it starts to uh, self combust. Um, mm. that, it's, that's even possible. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, any heat source can cause a fire. When it comes to climate, what do you want people to take away when you, uh, when ter in terms of climate impacts to to wildfires? Um, because you know, there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be, you know, people talk about debate debate things. But what's for you? What's the takeaways you want people to have when it comes to thinking about climate and its interaction with wildfires? Yeah, well, I mean, for a lot of my career. Um, as you're probably aware, like climate change was something we debated. Is it happening? Is it not? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I think now it's it's fairly accepted that yeah, it's it's here. Yeah. Um, the scientists were right, and if anything, it's happening faster than what we expected. Mm -hmm. and, um, the uh, the thing I would share with respect to fire is that we are also seeing you know extreme fire behavior at scales that. Uh, uh, we have never experienced in our, our living careers and mm. um, fire agencies are going to have to adapt to that. But 
to effectively, I think, deal with the changing fire regimes, the changing fire loads that climate change is going to bring. It's not just going to be the fire agencies that are going to solve this.